Hello, here is your first look at Samsung's newest top-of-the-line flagship phone, the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It's the follow-up to last year's ridiculously specced and ridiculously priced S20 Ultra. It's part of the new Galaxy S21 lineup that Samsung announced. And I have a separate video all about the S21 and S21 Plus that you should take a look at. The S21 Ultra picks up where the S20 Ultra left off and has anything and everything Samsung could put into a phone. And yet, despite headline-worthy additions of new cameras and a new display, the biggest deal with the Galaxy S21 Ultra is actually something Samsung took off of the phone. And that's $200. The S21 Ultra starts at $1,200, which is still a lot, but much cheaper than the $1,400 price of the original S20 Ultra. I mean, $200. Even when there isn't a global pandemic going on, that's a lot of money. So let's take a look at what $1,200 gets you in 2021 from Samsung. The design, well, it isn't radically different, but that domino-sized camera bump now spills over to the sides of the phone, which I think looks good. I wanna get the phone in my hands to see how chunky the camera bump is, because it's kinda of hard to tell from photos alone. The S21 Ultra comes in phantom black, which in video looks really amazing, and phantom silver that replaces the not-so-attractive dark gray on last year's S20 Ultra. Yeah. Both the front and back are covered in Gorilla Glass Victus, which we first saw on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Around the front is a 6.8-inch screen that is uh, ever so slightly smaller than the 6.9-inch one on last year's Ultra. The S21 Ultra keeps the same resolution, the same 120 hertz variable refresh rate that makes everything look buttery smooth. And it has the same centered hole punch that houses the same 40 megapixel selfie camera, all of which is impressive. New this year is a feature called the Eye Comfort Shield that adjusts the amount of blue light based on the time of day and the content on screen to help reduce eye fatigue. We'll have to wait until we get an Ultra to see how well it works. Samsung claims this display is 25% brighter. Yeah, so imagine waking that screen up in the middle of the night, you know? <laughs> the Ultra display also gets a 50% increase in contrast, giving it a 3 million to 1 ratio. Yeah, look, I know numbers might not mean much to you, but for reference, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, as well as the S20 Ultra, both have a 2 million to 1 ratio, and both look outstanding. I'm so excited to see what the S21 Ultra screen looks like in person. I mean, between the high refresh rate, the increased brightness, and contrast, I can't even finish my sentence because my brain can't compute what it will look like. Now, I, I, I sound like a, a bit of an infomercial here, but that's not all. The display also gets a larger ultrasonic fingerprint reader and now has Wacom technology, you know, the company that makes those stylus and tablets you see graphic designers using. This means the S21 Ultra supports the use of the S Pen from the Galaxy Note line of phones. This is the first Galaxy S phone to offer S Pen support, meaning you can draw, take notes, edit photos, sign documents, and more. Again, sound like an infomercial here, but there are a few caveats. The S21 Ultra doesn't come with an S Pen, so you can either buy a new one for 40 bucks, or if you already have a Galaxy Note phone, use an S Pen from it. The S21 Ultra doesn't support Bluetooth and S Pen gesture functionality. For example, it can't send you a leave behind notification. And there isn't a built-in place on the Ultra to store the S Pen. However, Samsung will be selling cases for the Ultra that includes S Pen storage. Does this mean the end of the Galaxy Note line of phones? Honestly, I don't know. But I'd say it's more about Samsung expanding the S Pen rather than killing off the Note. Wow. I don't think I've ever talked about a phone display this much in a video. Let's move on to the cameras, which are pretty much exactly the same aside from three changes. First, there is no longer a time of flight camera for depth info. Next is the addition of laser autofocus, which we saw on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This should address some of the autofocus problems we experienced with the S20 Ultra, especially when recording video. And last, there are now two telephoto cameras, one with a three times optical zoom and the other with a 10 times optical zoom. 
The S21 Ultra still has the infamous 100 times space zoom, but gone is the on-camera labeling. Samsung paired the two telephoto cameras together, so when you're zooming in, it can combine data from both to create zoomed-in photos with better image quality. Samsung says that this telephoto experience is also more stable than the 100 times space zoom on the original S20 Ultra. Now on paper, the dual telephoto cameras seem smart because whether you zoom in relatively close or rather far, you're gonna hit optical zoom at two points. And remember, optical zoom provides the most pure, undistorted images. Most phones have a single telephoto camera with a single optical zoom length. Now, in Pro Mode, you can capture 12-bit RAW photos. There are also new video features, including Director's View, which lets you preview all of your cameras on screen at once and select the best shot, and Vlogger View, which lets you capture video from both the front and rear cameras at the same time. I'm really excited to try out some of these video features. On the whole, these camera additions and upgrades are definitely not revolutionary. And we have to test them to see how they hold up in the real world to see their strengths and, well, maybe their weaknesses. Powering the new S21 Ultra is Android's best and fastest, the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chip, or is it 888 chip? Anyway, just like last year, you can get either 12 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM, and you have storage options for 128, 256, or 512 gigabytes. And like last year, the Ultra has a big, honking 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which will be interesting to see how it handles that brighter display. The Ultra also supports both sub-6 and millimeter wave flavors of 5G. There's Wi-Fi 6E support and ultra wideband support, which can allow you to do things like unlock your car without taking your keys out. Look, obviously you need a compatible car, which is sold separately. Like all phones in the S21 lineup, the Ultra supports Samsung's new Galaxy Smart Tags accessory that you can attach to various things like your keys or bags to keep track of them. It's kind of like that popular tile tracker. Again, all of these upgrades and the price is $200 less. So where is Samsung finding all of these savings? Well, the S21 Ultra doesn't come with a wall charger. And that's about it, really. With the S21 and S21 Plus, I can see where Samsung made trade-offs, and I think mostly they're smart ones. But with the S21 Ultra, unless that charger costs Samsung $200, I don't know how it's hitting that $1,200 price. Maybe this speaks more about the S20 Ultra being priced too high. Pre-orders for the Galaxy S21 Ultra start January 14th at 11 a.m. Eastern, and it will be available on January 29th. But now I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about the S21 Ultra? Would you buy one over the Note 20 Ultra? And what appeals to you about the new phone? Throw your thoughts in the comments. Oh, and also make sure you check out my other video on the Galaxy S21 and S21 Plus.